welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucy Moon and today we are doing an Everlane haul. I never thought I'd do a haul independently of a capsule wardrobe video, but here we are. Before I start, let me tell you a little bit about what I'd heard about Everlane. I'm not a sustainable YouTuber. I don't have a sustainable YouTube channel. I just love fashion and beauty, but I always try and think a little bit, just a little bit about my ethics and how I can always like kind of slowly one up myself and progress myself in being a better consumer. So when I heard about Everlane, which are an ethical store, I went, mm, that sounds so interesting. They have lovely designs. They show you the factories in which the clothes are made. It just looks really cool. Everlane's America based. I couldn't tell you that much about them, but I'll stick a little bio somewhere here. All I know is that I went on the website and I absolutely love the designs. I love that they don't follow these like fashion forward, trend focused, every season it changes kind of routines. They just go with timeless pieces that are actually really fashionable and cool, but you don't have to worry about them like going out of style the next year or the next year or the next year. Slow fashion, that's the word. <laughs> I saw all of this stuff and thought this is incredible. So I did an order. I just like to say as well, before I start, I'm basing this kind of structure of this video off of Emma Hill's incredible video where she did an Everlane review. I think she reviewed four items and talked you through it in great detail what they were like. I'll link that down below. First of all, I bought the bits. I think I bought five things in total. The clothes collectively came to $674.40. That's including VAT. <sighs> So much money. I've never spent more money on a single bulk clothing purchase in my life. It was a lot of money to part with and I was very aware that I probably wasn't going to be able to return anything if it didn't fit. I was just going to have to depop it. So I was going to lose money. <laughs> Shipping was free because I spent over a certain number of dollars. However, I wasn't sure if I was going to get a customs charge at the end of it. Whenever I've ordered from Sephora or Kylie Cosmetics, I will always be hit by a customs fee. And it's usually about the value of like 12.5% of whatever I've ordered as a whole. Basically, I'd already spent $670 and I was just sitting waiting for a customs charge, which fortunately never came. So I feel very, very fortunate for that. I tried to pick items that I actually wanted myself, but also that I knew were things that people were actually interested in seeing reviewed. Cause again, I knew I could resell stuff. I'd lose a bit of what I spent, but I'd still be offering like advice on these like key products that Everlane markets to their consumers. Timeline wise, I ordered everything in late December. I think it was December 18th. The first thing to arrive was the boots. The boots arrived 10 days after the order was placed. And I was wondering why this was, but then I looked at the box and it says Everlane Italy. So I kind of wonder if they ship directly from Italy from the Italian boot makers, as opposed to going via America, which if they did is great because it avoided God knows how much in terms of like shipping time and energy. And if we're talking about a sustainable brand, you wanna keep the shipping as limited as possible just because of your environmental impact. So I ordered the Boss boot. That is the design with the pointed toe and the slight heel and I ordered them in black. I really just wanted a plain black boot. I checked the reviews before I ordered and they all said order a whole size above what you normally would. They come up quite small, especially with the pointed toe. So that's what I did. And on first impressions, they fit so, so well. When I first put them on, I was like, oh God, they're slightly slipping at my heel, but I wasn't wearing very thick socks. So as soon as I put normal socks on, just like ankle socks, they were absolutely fine. They've never caused me any problems, even like to this day, and I've had them for a month now. Phase one, the boots was an incredible success. Even I was amazed because I feel like I never order stuff online and it actually comes and is the right size for me. And then these are the boots. Excuse them with these jeans because I don't really flatter me the best. As you can see, they are this like low heeled pointed toe. They've got these little tags on the back. I still don't know what they're really for, but hey, they exist and I love them. There's nothing really unique about them. They are very standard ankle boots but I love the pointed toe and the heel and the way it kind of acts together. And also there is a zipper here, it's not elastic. I think they look really good from the side, so I'm gonna show you them from the side a bit more. Just some standard black boots, but they're just designed really nicely. Here's a close up of what they look like. Those are the boots. And then maybe I'd say like a week and a bit later, the clothes arrived. First of all, let's talk about the packaging. It came in a big box that said Everlane on it. I opened it up and there were all the products. The only thing I would say about the packaging is they came in these massive plastic bags and they do say on them that they're 100% made from recycled stuff and they're recyclable, but the bags themselves were such an excessive size. I don't know why you'd ever need a bag that big, maybe to cut costs, maybe they just made one big one. But yeah, these five enormous bags just like came out of the the box, which were which had the clothes in them, just as like packaging extras. I personally don't think they're necessary, but then I do feel like I don't understand the intricacies of why a clothing company might need to put their stuff in plastic bags. It might be law, like for all I know, or there might be some really practical reason. So it's not really for me to say, <laughs> but 
I wish they could use less plastic in their packaging. Other than that, everything arrived perfectly fine, nothing was damaged and it came all the way from the US, so that's good. The first thing I noticed was the puffer jacket. I got the thin white puffer jacket that's made out of recycled bottles. I can't remember the name of the exact model, but I'll put it somewhere over here. My first thought was that it was much thinner than I was expecting. I'd expected a puffier puffer jacket. I don't know why, I just had this idea in my head of what it would look like. And it was still exactly the same as it was on the on the website. I don't know why I'd come up with this idea that it'd be thicker, but it was the perfect fit in terms of kind of similar to those Uniqlo ones that kind of go under coats that, you know, you know what I mean? Maybe, I don't know. But it was kind of similar to those. I'd also expected it to be in a completely white color with the black zip detailing. That's what I loved about it so much. But it kind of came in this ever so slight iridescent white. It's kind of slightly pearlescent. I can't really explain it, it's just the material. It's nice, really nice, don't get me wrong, but it's slightly different to how it looks on the website where it looks really bright white. It fits really well, it has a great arm length, and also, really randomly, it's really soft. And I was expecting it to, I don't know why, I guess because of the plastic bottles and when you think of recycled stuff, you think of kind of rougher, harder textures and like loads of materials being combined together but this is just a really soft jacket. I was so happy about that. It was like complete surprise. Also, I love the neckline. It comes up as a low polo neck, which I think is really, really lovely. It would suit pretty much anyone, I think as well, even if you think you have a wider face, a rounder face or a shorter neck. Yeah, big fan. It is this kind of white, but ever so slightly off-white, like maybe ever so slightly creamy and also slightly shiny. <laughs> I don't quite know how to explain that. And then there's black zip detailing, as you can see. The neckline's really good, actually. It comes to it comes to right here. I'll zip this up now and show you. So this is what it looks like done up. As you can see, there are two pockets on the side with the same black zips and the neckline right here comes up a really good height for me, at least. I really like it. And then full body, as you can see, it comes to hip height or ever so slightly above. I think when you're moving around a bit, it'll sit slightly higher. And I really love how boxy it is. If I hold my arm out, you can see there isn't really any shape cut into the waist, and I really like that. Then I saw the cashmere jumper, which I'm wearing right now. Ooh. The cashmere is something that is raved about with Everlane. Like, people talk about it as being one of their best things that they do. So, as you can imagine, I was keen to try it. I didn't necessarily think I needed another jumper, but... I wanted, I wanted to give it a go. The first thing I noticed about the cashmere jumper was that the color was much darker than I was expecting. It's called oatmeal on the website. So I was expecting a lighter kind of creamier oatmeal, but no, this is like a darker, as you can see, like almost like brownie beige oatmeal. I feel like not that many people are anal about oatmeal the way I'm anal about oatmeal, but it really does show. The other first impression I had was that it is very thin. I was expecting it to be slightly, slightly thicker, but I do now actually really love that it's a thin knit because I didn't have a thin knit in my collection and they're so useful. It also sits perfectly under the puffer jacket. So this one came out as a complete surprise to me. I was expecting to not like it as soon as it arrived or to just give it away or to depop it. And actually, I really, really love it. It's got just, oh, I've got so much wear now. It also comes up at a really good neckline point, so it covers t-shirts really well. So this is the cashmere knit. As you can see, it's an oatmeal colour, but it's slightly dark. It is very fine knit. It's quite a slim fit as well. And you might be able to see the neckline. I've worn an actual t-shirt under this, so you can see how someone would actually wear it, because I know a lot of people probably just try on the item itself when they're doing a try-on, as opposed to putting it in the context, if that makes any sense. But with a normal crew neck t-shirt, it's just, you can kind of see something peeking through, but it would be hidden if it wasn't bright, bright blue. And then on the sleeves, as you can see, there's like this like longer bit of ribbing, but you can just fold it down and then it looks normal because look, it comes out longer than I was expecting. And then this is it tucked in into just a pair of skinny jeans. I fold it over the back, but if I untuck it, then you can see that there is this again ribbed is this what this is called i'm not quite sure but it comes down to the hip i guess like hip range so to get a good understanding of the size and shape this is what it looks like as just out unstyled now let's talk about the jeans i ordered the high waist straight leg jean i believe it might have a different name but that is the style you can get it in so many places but i thought if we can find a good one at everlane and it's only like the equivalent of 60 pounds or 70 pounds i should be trying it and i should be recommending it 
so I tried it. I'll be honest with you, it is the most disappointing of all the purchases, but I'll explain why. So when I first pulled them out of the packaging, I loved the colour, and actually the waistline versus the hip line, I was like, this will actually fit me quite well. And the legs were wider than they normally are, which is really nice as well, because it means I'll get my thighs in it. When I was on the website, I went on the size guide because buying jeans online for me is a risk, <laughs> is a huge risk. And so I went on the sizing chart and it actually said to size up two whole sizes more than I normally would. So I did. Even though it says it's a 27 waist on there, so that is actually what I would say I am anyway. It still seems like I still sized up twice, which was huge. In my brain I was like, how is this sizing? Like, how does this sizing work? In Topshop jeans, for context, I'm a 28 waist and a 32 leg. So I put them on and the waist fit, which was great. It was a little bit loose, but I can't really ask for much more than a bit loose unfortunately and then the bum fit and the hips fit that was great and the legs fit everything looked all right however there was this weird like i don't even know if it was like a fault or if it's just not designed for my body with my legs you know how legs go up like this and then there should be like maybe like a little long gap from the crotch down maybe i don't know mine was this little circle there was this excess bit of denim that was kind of caving in because there wasn't a bit of my skin or my fat or my thigh, whatever, to fill it. And so it just sat in this really little weird round way. I'll try and show you, but it just doesn't look right. There's nothing I could do to stop it. It's just the way the jeans are made. But I think if someone was a slim fit person and they, they had narrower hips than me and narrower thighs than me, then these jeans would be perfect. But for me, they just didn't fit right. This means I will be selling them. So if you have slightly narrower hips than me, give them a go. I'll put them on my Depop. My Depop will be linked down here I guess. I'll also link it on my Insta story so you can go and see that. The jeans were disappointing which is so annoying but you can't have everything. So these are the high rise skinny jean. I got these in whatever the equivalent of leg 32 is so the longer leg. I'm five foot seven for reference and as you can see they end at a really good point that kind of on my ankle which is exactly where I'd want them to end. They fit like a straight skinny which is just how straight jeans fit on me because I have a bum and thighs. This is not an angle I thought I'd be filming anytime soon but this is what the butt looks like. Big pockets, very flattering. If I come forwards, you can see there are big pockets here. There's a button that's just standard button. It's like this dark gray and a zipper here that goes down to actually quite close to my crotch. So it follows all the standard jean things that are meant to make you like look flattered. However, the one thing I really, really don't like is that look, when I stand with my legs together, there is this hole right here. There's this like huge bit of material that kind of bumps outwards right here. And that happens in a lot of my jeans, but the way these ones are made, there's like excess material. So it makes the legs look super uneven, like right at the top. It's hard to explain unless you know what other jeans look like on me, but like this bumping right here on my right leg is just like not fun. So yeah, this is a full body shot just for reference on what they look like. And finally, let's talk about the other pair of shoes that I got. I bought a pair of the pumps because when I went on the website, they were on the kind of last chance to buy area, which is, I think they say pay what you think it's worth. That's their equivalent of a sale. I went on, I paid what I thought they were worth, which was the medium price, I think. I just went for the normal price. And they're these, oh, they're so beautiful. Like the design of them is so nice. They're these black pumps with this pointed toe and this kind of inverted toe area as well. Really beautiful. I've been looking for some like that for so long and they'll be wonderful for spring and summer. However, when I was looking at reviews, I looked again, obviously at the reviews and everyone said to size up at least one size again because the point issue is a real issue and it seems to really hurt people's feet. So I sized up a whole size and they just fit. So I would say size up a whole size and a half if you can. However, I did notice that they are very stiff material across the top of the foot, the bit that keeps your foot in the shoe. It's really, really stiff. And so I think I'm gonna have to either wear them around the house a lot or work out a way to soften that area so that it becomes a bit more malleable and a bit more normal shoe-esque. Because at the moment it would be way too uncomfortable to walk anywhere long with them. You could definitely like get in a cab, get out at a party, stand at your party and then get in a cab and go home, whatever. But in London, that's not what people do. People are on the tube, walking around, up and down escalators. Yeah you need to be able to have shoes that withstand that. And they're definitely durable enough for that. It's just a case of whether they are comfortable. However, I'm good with shoes. I can normally make them work. So I'm gonna look up my old wives' remedies, ask my aunts, see what I can do to make that bit a bit softer. And then I think they'll be fine. So these right here are the pumps. They sit in such a lovely point on the foot. They really make my ankles look lovely. They're in a true black shade. They're kind of in a suede material. However, they are reinforced along the top at least. They're very firm. So they sit very firmly on your foot. And as I mentioned in the video, I got a size up from what I normally would have. 
and as you can see they fit pretty much perfectly. I could have even done with a little more room. Yeah I love the way that these look on my feet, I think they're so so beautiful. After wearing everything for what like three or four weeks, those are all my thoughts. I hope that that helps at least some of you if you're buying from Everlane. The purchase I'm happiest with was the boots. I love, love, love the boots. And I actually really love this cashmere. I just think it's so nice and warm and good. And I love the puffer jacket. So there are three things I've really loved. The slight disappointing things, definitely the jeans, I was just unimpressed. They were just not built for my shape. And I would have thought with Everlane's history of using really diverse models that they would maybe have made some that fit. But you can't have everything. You can't have everything. So if you're a pear shape like me, maybe don't get Everlane's straight jeans. Overall, I would definitely shop with them again. I've really enjoyed the experience. It was very transparent, very honest. And whilst obviously I'm trying to use a couple more like, you know, secondhand items, I love buying new stuff. Like I still really limit how much I buy, but when I buy new stuff, I'd like for it to come from a place that has a conscience. It's really hard to find brands with a conscience with the same sense of style that I do and with decent pricing and delivery. So when you find all three, that's amazing. I would just say maybe don't do big orders because that did cost me a lot and whilst I didn't get charged customs, I'm sure other people will. I feel like I might have just got away with it on Christmas Goodwill. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like it and let me know in the comments if you've ever tried anything from Everlane and what you would recommend or if you're a pear-shaped girl like me, where you buy your jeans because my God, am I still looking for jeans been long enough. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video.